Hey, what's going on developers? Welcome back to the Next.js full course with a real estate project. In the previous video, we have created this landing page, but as you can see, there are a lot of these properties in our landing page. So in this video, we are going to implement the pagination for this landing page in order to fetch and show the properties page by page in our landing page. So I think that is enough with the introduction. And before moving forward, if you want to watch the previous episode of this tutorial, you can click on this card here. And also I put the links of all episodes of this tutorial in the description below. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, here in order to implement the pagination, instead of fetching all the properties, we need to fetch them page by page. So here in the home page of our application, which is the page.tsx inside the app directory, here we use the find many function from the Prisma client in order to fetch all the properties from our property table. We need to tell the Prisma that we need to fetch the records here from the property table page by page. So in order to do that, we need to specify two parameters inside the configuration object of the find many function. So after the select API here, we need to specify skip and also take. So the skip here tells the Prisma how many records it should skip from the beginning of the property table and then the take parameter here tells the Prisma that after skipping the records from this point how many records should I fetch. So we need to initialize these two parameter in order to implement the pagination here. So first we need to define the page size. So I go outside of the page component here and define a constant for the page size. So here I'm going to say const page size and set it to 12. So the size of the page is now 12. It means that in our find mini function, we just want to fetch 12 records. So here we can set the take parameter here to page size. So in order to initialize the skip here, we need to know the number of the current page and also the page size. So we already have defined the page size. For example, if we are on the first page, we don't want to skip any records. We are going to fetch 12 records from the beginning of our table. If we are on the second page, we need to skip the first 12 records. If we are on the third page, we need to skip the first 24 records, okay? So here, in order to initialize that, we need a variable, for example, page nom. We didn't define this variable. We're gonna do that in a second. So we need to say that skip the page nom times page size. Okay, so as you can see, we have an error here and that's because we haven't defined the page name. So we need to find a way to store the current page name in this page. The one easy way is to keep it inside a use state, but this will turn this page to a client component and we don't want to do that. The other way, which is really better than the first approach, is to store this page name inside our search params of our URL. So in order to access to the search params, we need to define an interface for the props of this page component. So after the page size, I'm defining interface for the props, interface props. And in order to have access to the search prompt, we need to define a search prompt property inside it, search prompts. It should be search prompts, so the spelling is very important here. Okay, and then it is going to be a key value object. The key here is always be a string, so the type of key is a string, and the value can be a string or a list of strings or undefined. Okay, now we can access to the search prompts here. First, we need to set the type of the props to the props interface. Okay, now we can grab the search prompts out of the props of the page component. Now here, we can access to the page nom. I'm gonna define the page nom here, const page nom, and set it to search prompts dot page nom. So in this way, we are going to extract the page nom from the search prompts of our URL. But the page nom search prompt might be undefined, which means that it might not be present in our URL search prompt. So in that case, we are going to set the page nom here with a zero. Okay, so here, now we have the page nom. Since the page nom is a string here, we need to convert it to a number. So I put a plus sign before it. So now we have the page nom and page size. Skip the page nom times page size and then take as much as the page size from our property table. For example, if we are on the first page, the page nom is zero. So the value of this expression will be zero, of course. So we don't skip any records. 
if we are on the second page num, the page num is 1, 1 times 12 yields 12. So we skip the first 12 records of our property table. So in this way we are enforcing the pagination in our query. Now the second step is to find out how many pages we have. In order to find that we need to count the number of records inside the property table. We can do that with the prisma.property.count function. So now we need to resolve two promises in this page. The first one is for find menu function and the second one is for count function. Okay, so instead of resolving them one by one, we are going to resolve them simultaneously in a promise.all function. So here we turn these properties constant to properties promise and remove this await keyword here. So now the properties promise is just a promise that needs to be resolved. Okay, now we're going to create another promise for counting the number of records. I'm going to say const total properties promise and set it to prisma dot property dot count function note that here we don't use the await keyword here because we don't want to resolve it here okay now we have two promises we are going to resolve them simultaneously in the promise dot all function so here i'm going to define a list here for now we're going to leave it empty and then use the await keyword and call the promise dot all function now we need to pass a list here and inside this list we are going to pass the promises that we are going to resolve. So the first one is going to be our properties promise which are our main query and the second one is the total promises. Now we can access to the resolved return objects of these two promises. The first one is going to be our properties and the second one is going to be total properties. Okay these are just name of the variables you can name it whatever you want. And here let's close the explorer here to have more room here. Okay now that we we have the number of the total properties here we are going to calculate the number of the pages so after that we are going to calculate the number of total pages I'm defining a constant for that total pages it is going to be total properties divided by the page size okay we just need to pass the returning value to a math.floor function so we are going to take the floor of this expression now that we have the total pages and the current page num we can implement the pagination. We can use the pagination component from the next UI, but since it's a client component, using that inside the J6 of our property container will turn this component to a client component, and this is not a good idea, and we don't want to do that. So we are going to create another component for the pagination. I'm going to call it pagination container.tsx. Let's create a functional component here. We don't want this line. And here we are going to define an interface for the props. So I'm going to say interface props. It is going to take the total pages, which is going to be a number. We also need the current page, which is going to be a number as well. And here we're going to grab them from the props of the component. Set the type of the props to props interface. And we can just structure the props and grab the total pages and also the current page. So inside this component, we are going to say if the total pages equals to one, we just return now. Okay. So it means that if we have just only one page, we don't want to render the pagination component. Otherwise, we are going to return the pagination component from the next UI. So I'm going to put it here and make sure that you are importing that from the next UI slash react. Okay, we don't want the ending tag, so just remove them. And here we need to first pass the total number of pages. So I pass the total pages to the total props and then we're going to specify the initial page which is going to be one and we need to specify the current page with the page prop we're going to set it to the current page that we've got from the props and then we need to define the on change events here so here we are going to set the on change it is going to take a callback that take the page here so the page is actually the number or the index of the page that the user click on for example if the user click on the second page on the pagination component the page parameter here is the index of the page which in this example it would be one okay so now that we have the index of the page that the user clicked on we can change the URL with the new page number 
Okay, so since it is a client component, we can't use the redirect function. We need to use the use router hook. So first we need to turn it to a client component, use client, and then here in our component, we are going to use the use router hook. We're going to define a router and set it to use a router hook, which comes from the next navigation. Okay, now we can here call the router that push function and send the user to the home page but with different page now okay so we're gonna put a question mark here and put the search params which is going to be page num and set it to page parameter here from our callback in order to make this component a reusable component we can define a route prop here route we're gonna make it optional and set its type to string okay now we can grab it from the props route and define a default value for it we're gonna set its default value to our home page so I put a slash here and then here instead of this slash here we can use the route props so we can use this component in any other page okay now let's go to the property container and here we need to put the pagination so here I'm gonna put the pagination container and then we need to specify the total pages and the current page props here so we need to take them inside the props of this component and then pass it to the pagination container so we have used the props with children type it guarantees that this props type has always a children object inside it with the type of react node we can also define a generics here and inside the generics we can define the other properties for the props type so we're gonna have the total pages of course it is going to be a number and also we're going to have the current page which is also going to be a number let's save that and now we can grab them from the props you can see now we have the current page and also the total pages here we can just pass them to the pagination container set the current page to the current page props here and also the total pages to the total pages from the props what's the point of using this pagination container you might be asking I mean you might ask why we didn't use the pagination component from the next UI directly inside the property container instead of this pagination container as I mentioned before that's because the pagination component from the next UI has the unchange event and since we want to use this unchange event function we need to mark the parent client to use client so we just created this pagination container and use the use client here inside it so we don't need to put the use client in our property container and turn it to a client component we just use this client component inside this server component if we were to use the pagination directly here we would need it to put the use client directive here and turn this property container to a client component which is not ideal so that's why we have created this pagination container and put the use client directive inside this pagination container okay now since we have added these two property in the props of the component we need to go to our home page where we use the property container and initialize those two props here so here first we're going to set the total pages to the total pages that we have calculated here and then we're going to set the current page to the page num that we've got from the search props okay again put a plus before it in order to turn it to a number okay now let's get back to the browser you can see now we have the pagination here so if I click on the second page you can see now we show the properties inside the second page let's click on third page you can see we show the properties inside the third page so let's get back to the VS code and here change the page size to eight pages and now let's get back to the browser you can see we have eight property in each page and the number of total pages is now changed so we can move through pages here inside our pagination container so yeah that will brings us to the end of this video and stay tuned for my next video in which we are going to implement the search bar for our landing page so if this video was useful for you please share it with your friends and if you hit the like and subscribe button that will be icing on the cake for me thanks for your support and have a nice time bye bye